I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work and are backed by science. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. We use only top-of-the-line formulations dosed for maximum results and the best flavoring systems available. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today joining us is our good friend, the Stanimal, Stan DeLongu, getting ready for that California Pro in the men's open division. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me today. You, I like the beard. It looks good. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you going to shave yeah, that for I'm the gonna... show? Yeah, I think at least one of the two shows, I think I'm going to shave it, yeah. Yeah. You look like... <laughs> I uh, thinking about that today. You look like Jessup Wilcox, you know. Like who? Remember Jessup, the uh, the guy from... Oh, think, yes. The yeah, German yeah. bodybuilder? Yeah. 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 You look like him. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Um, it had to be a pretty tough decision to say, you know what, I'm going to go from classic physique to men's open. I mean, that's a huge jump. Obviously, you were a bodybuilder right from the beginning, but... Still, it's it's a little intimidating, especially since you were placing well, you know, in the classic physique division. What was the final straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak? Well, I mean, I started in men's physique. I turned pro in men's physique. I don't yeah. know if you would know that. Oh, class, that's true. So, men's physique, yeah. <laughs> so I already jumped, you know, from men's physique to classic. Yeah. And then it was just natural progression. Last year, as we were getting ready for the uh, for the Olympia with Chris Aceto, I think we were about ten weeks out, and I was about ready around two thirty. And uh, Chris was like, that's the last time we, we, you know, we make that weight at 207 was just too much weight to lose. So, um, yeah, that, from there it was decided that we're going to do bodybuilding next year. And how tall are you? Um, just under 5'10". Okay. All right. So, I mean, 245 is, yeah, obviously if you're 230 and you're in shape, it's not, at that point you weren't big enough for open, but you certainly were way... You were sacrificing muscle to, to, to make that classic physique class. Yeah, and, and I wasn't fully, like showing my full uh, like potential on stage because right. I was ending up flat on stage and just yeah. didn't, didn't look quite right. So. so how the hell did yeah. you make weight at all, all those shows and actually qualify for the Olympia? That, that, that's a miracle <laughs> in and of itself right there. Well, I qualified for the Olympia the, the weekend after my show, the 2018 Olympia. So I did my first Olympia in classic and then the following weekend I went to South Korea Qualified there, so then I had the whole year. Oh, so then, yeah, you know, I see. You put all that muscle on over the course of the year. I yeah. understand. I got you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Now yeah. and then, yeah, this year we added another lot, like, a lot more size again because I think I'm going to be around that weight on the stage, like 245. Are you are you still living in California? No, I moved to Chicago July 1st, so I've been in Chicago now for six weeks. What are, what are you doing in Chicago? Ah, uh, man. <laughs> It kind of like um, just happened. Like I was thinking of moving somewhere else because you know California. I mean, I love Gold Gym, um, but you know, there's nobody le left there right now. Sean moved uh, away in Oxnard. Uh, Dexter is about to retire. And he's in Florida with the, the COVID-19 and all that stuff. So, and the gym was closed, and you know it was expensive to live there, and there was no real like reason to pay that much to be there anymore. So um, an opportunity came up. Uh, my girlfriend, she's originally from Chicago, and uh, um, yeah, I came visit the place, check out the gym. I like the whole atmosphere, and um, yeah, just uh, just said let's do it. So, yeah, Wh been where do you train over time. there in Chicago? So I'm training at Chicago Barbell Compound. It's in Parkridge, and right. uh, I'm training with Mendoz Buckle from uh, Underground Athletes, Brandon yeah. Hendrickson, uh, Chris Hester, Raging Silverback. Right. Um, yeah, a bunch of good guys, and uh, we have really good energy in the gym. It's really fun, having a lot of fun here. Do they still have Quad's gym over there? Is it still open? Yeah, Quad's gym is like only maybe five, six minutes from my house. I, that's why I know. I, I've been to that area. That's why I was wondering why you're not there. 
Uh, it's just because uh, Mendes was saying, you, you know, he was training over out there with uh, Brendan and all his athletes. So I uh, checked out the place. They had parking out there. It was it's just easier because the quad gym is hard to park there. So I just I just went you there. You could you could probably <laughs> walk. You could take uh, mass transportation. I think I took the uh, I don't yeah. know if I took a bus. I think I took the bus to the gym when I was there. Yeah, I could. I mean, I, I could totally. I mean, I probably still like end up training there sometimes. But once I got here, I started my prep, and uh, it was you know easy to go there and having like a group of people to train with, and right. so you know we would just train, then pose, and you know how it is. So just do all the things we need to do. You went from such beautiful weather in California to the freezing, yes. frigid, cold winters in Chicago. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> no wonder yeah, why you have a beard. No wonder they had a dress. You have to you have to be like a Viking to live there. You know. <laughs> well, why not? It's actually warmer here than in California. Yeah. Um, not not but, for long. I got news for you. No, no, I know, I know. But actually, I'm looking forward to that because I, you know, I grew up in Switzerland and yeah. I lived in France, obviously. Right. And uh, when it's cold outside, it's much easier to eat. So for me, yeah. it's hard to eat enough. Um, yeah. Even right now, I'm cutting. Like people are asking me when I'm starting. When am I starting my my cut, because when they see how much I'm eating, they don't believe I'm cutting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And they have really good food here, too. So yeah. I think the offseason is going to be really productive next year. Sir, so, Serge Dubre, who was also from uh, France, used to stay, uh, used to go outside between sets and, and shiver. He said that's how we burnt all the fat. So maybe yeah. that's, maybe there's something to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, he was training for hours, too. <laughs> like, I know Danny Hester told me he was drinking Coca-Cola during his workout and training for, like, four or five hours. That's when Danny learned how to, like, sneak out, you know, like, would disappear in the middle of the workout. Be like, yeah, I'll be right back. And <laughs> but he cannot be <laughs> Chris is, you know, used to like to train volume. He said that's the only person he couldn't finish a workout with. Serge Dupre wanted to uh, kill himself. Yeah. But, uh, that's what I heard, yeah. Yeah. So you're in, yeah, I, th I still think you're crazy. You what? I, I got to tell you, I understand why you left California, but I and, and it the traffic sucks there too. But Venice weather, I think, is is perfect because it never gets too hot there, like you said, and it never really gets yeah. cold there. It, it's kind of like mm -hmm. the perfect weather, but sometimes you can stagnate in that kind of a situation because it's like it never changes, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I, no, I mean, honestly, when I I was thinking more to move to. Um, to Florida. I talked to uh, Flex Lewis back yeah. in uh, April or something. I was thinking of like around Boca Raton or something. But yeah. just the opportunity here came, like, uh, just came up and uh, it was a good opportunity. And uh, honestly, everything is falling into place. So it's working great. The airport is pretty close. So I'm looking like forward, like during um, when I'm not competing, doing more traveling and, um, you know, going to more shows yeah. and do more, more like collaboration with different people or in the industry and yeah, um, yeah develop my social media even more uh, hopefully yeah I'd like to like do more things with more athletes because in California it's so expensive there yeah you cannot have to stay there here I have really the chance to be able to, to travel around the whole uh, US yeah the, the truth is so, for you it doesn't pay to stay in a place that costs a, lo a lot of money to live because you can do what you do no matter where you are you can do it in exactly in, in Alaska if you wanted to I mean really if you think about it I mean it, it, made, it, uh, it made sense before like when, you know when I first got here um, obviously training with Sean learning from Charles Glass Psycho Fitness all these yeah. guys but now that I had that opportunity and I've learned a lot and that all that is kind of like um, yeah going away in a certain sense um, it just didn't make sense anymore. Now, so that's why I wanted to get back toward like you know, like this kind of a atmosphere, having like uh, that's why I really started talking talking to Flex because I wanted to be like around other people, right? Or you know, we're training together, and here we kind of have the same you know uh, energy. Like Brendan Hendrickson is obviously uh, training to uh, reconquer his title in the men's physics division. Um, we have like Chris Esther was like really hungry to uh, get his pro card. Um, at nationals this year, and we have like people already like flying here to like you know get some training session with us, and uh, sure. so it's, it's really coming together nicely. Now uh, you had a good relationship with obviously Sean Roden. When you say Sean, that's who you're referring to. In case yeah. people don't know, what's uh, going on with Roden? Have you do you speak to him regularly still? Yeah, I mean I'm gonna meet. I'm gonna do it next week, so I'm gonna meet him next week. We're gonna finish my prep with him. Uh, I just want to, you know, go back to the roots and train with him from the last. Oh, you're in Chicago now. You're moving back. To, you're going back to California to finish the training with him. 
Well, the show was supposed to be in LA. So oh, right, right, right. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. And then, but it's uh, actually so, in yeah, Vegas, yeah, yeah. right? Sorry? The show's in Vegas, though. They moved it. Yeah, they moved it to Vegas. So, you know, that just, uh, this information came, up, uh, came around last week. Right. But, you know, I talked to him. He wants to, to come and support me. Good, uh, good. Awesome. So what's going well, on with Sean? So, so, Are we going to see, is his yeah. case coming up? Or what's, what's, what's the, the progress report on him? I don't, you know, we talk about a lot of things, but like, just, I know it's been in, on a hold so far, so I'm not really asking uh, until, like, once something comes up and he has a date, he, he's going to tell me. So there's no, there's no trial date yet? I mean, I know it kept being postponed, like, he was supposed to be end of April. And then, That's what I heard, yeah. And, yeah, so then he kept, you know, with the whole virus and all that, like, the opening and reclosing. And, yeah. I don't know exactly what everybody's at right now. But, Do you think yeah. they'll settle the case before uh, the Olympia? I hope so. Yeah. I know he's training like he, like he's doing it for sure. So. Well, I mean, you might as well. I mean, because if the case comes up before the Olympia and, and he wins, you know, and he's exonerated, then he can do the Olympia. Obviously, you got to be in shape. Yeah. You can't start training, you know, two weeks before the show for it, obviously, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what he did last year also. He was hoping, you know to be able to compete, and he was Right, but he knew he wasn't thing. going to do the show. I mean, he knew that the case wasn't coming up before. He was just training and hoping they were going to let him do it, you know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would so think that was the difference. if the case is settled, you know, they're definitely going to let him do it because they want him in the show, obviously, I would think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course they want him. I mean, there'll be uh, six, almost, you know what, Flex Lewis, Dexter Jackson, Phil Heath, Brennan Curry, yeah. and Sean will be five Mr. Olympia. That's crazy. You've never seen before, yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. <laughs> that's nuts. So yeah. you're going to be doing the Cal Pro, which has now been moved to, to Las Vegas. So they're, they're doing it in some kind of big hangar where they hold parties and stuff like that, which is smart, which is smart. Yeah. I always said, I'm surprised all the shows haven't gone to Vegas. Vegas should be like, you know what? We're a rogue state. We don't give a crap what the rules are. We're open for business. That, if the, I'm shocked that Vegas hasn't done that. That's That was always there whole shtick. We're open for business. We don't care what the other states are doing. You guys want to come here, you can hold whatever you want. That They would yeah. make a fortune if they did that. But Yeah, I don't know either, but like uh, I know why they're doing that in Tampa, I kind of. And um, yeah, just the only thing is in... Uh, I don't know exactly how the, the situation in Tampa, like the audience. I think they still allow some people to come watch the show. I'm not sure. But in uh, in Vegas, there's no audience. There's only like 50 people. Oh, really? The, Zero uh, audience. Okay, I didn't Zero. know. Zero. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't get. I'm surprised Vegas doesn't say "f you" and do whatever they want. That's always been there. <laughs> That's always been their I mentality. Mean, now you also have the Chicago Pro coming up after that. So that which would be perfect because it's in your backyard right there. Exactly. <laughs> Unless they move it. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, is uh, Chicago having problems? Is it, well, I, what? That's what I was going to ask you. What's the status update over there? No, oh, that's why also I'm really happy to be here. Is get everything just you know it's life as usual here. Nothing. I mean, of course you have to wear your mask inside yeah. the stores and all that stuff. But for the most part, it's uh it's regular life. It's uh, not that impacted. We I think we're pretty um, like one of the big cities that have the lowest number of cases. So it's pretty pretty good here. Yeah, well, that's good. So, are you yeah. con when you go uh, to the gym? Are you concerned about getting anything like that? I'm not concerned at all. No. No, I think, you know, I think, I think virus has been around for a long time. If you catch it, you, you know, you can, the body is strong enough to fight it. Um, and I believe I also got it like early on because I was traveling a lot around December last year. Oh, really? And I got sick then. So, I, yeah, I got some kind of flu like last week of December, first week of January last year. I was out for like two weeks. It was pretty strong. Like, yeah, no, you, might never, have, you, know, you might have had it. Yeah, so, and I went to Asia and... Yeah, I traveled a lot in December last year, so maybe. I don't know. Now, what, do you, what do you think you'll weigh on stage? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really care. <laughs> like, uh, I just want to come in really, uh, really peel, like, you know, uh, like perfect conditioning, classic physique style. Uh, but I think I'll be around 245 on stage. And uh, last year, after the Olympia, I did my first show in, in Open. I did the if I, if, um, IV Pro Italy. Uh, where uh, Rory Winkler and Nathan Diasha were competing too. Right. And I was 224 back then. And uh, Tyler Manion was judging the show. He told me, yeah, if you come back with 15, 20 more pounds, you should be really competitive. And that's pretty much what I, where I'm at right now. So. All right. Well, good I'm luck, man. Uh, you know, we, we love you. I mean, you're a, you're a character. I'm glad to see that you're not afraid to take that jump and evolve. 
with the times and and because a lot of guys are afraid to make the jump we saw george peterson make it successfully from classic to 212 obviously going through the open yeah. class is a little more difficult but you're a taller bodybuilder so i think you fit perfectly into that that realm and let's face yeah. it the guys today are not as big i mean the, the, the guys that are doing well i should say it's the shape and the condition guys that seem to be placing well so i wish you the best mm -hmm. of luck in uh in well in vegas but it's really the cal pro so yeah thank you very much yeah but for me it's just like natural evolution uh, of course, like, you know, I've learned from Sean, like, my strength's never going to be, like, being the mass monster. Yeah. So I'll, I'm going to always rely more on my shape and bring that classical look. But the weight limit in classic was just too low for me. Yeah. And some people were telling me, why didn't you do uh, 212? It's just five pounds. I was already, like, 20 pounds over, 25 pounds over last year right. for 212. So, like, there's no, no, it makes no sense for me to Yeah. To well, hey, Sean wrote it. Limited again. Sean Roden wasn't the biggest guy who won the Olympia, so, I mean, look at the, it's conditioning, shape, no, structure, only, presentation, you know, that's all important. Yeah, exactly, so he was only 238 when he won yeah. on stage. Um, I mean, he's got, of course, you know, um, crazy aesthetic, like small waist and all that stuff, but that, that just shows you don't need to be, like, huge on stage. No. If, you, if you come really pale, really conditioned, and, and you nail all your presentation, your, your posing is on point, you can really... Uh, I think you can get away today in uh, the big shows and yeah. uh, get away with the win. Yep, yep. Yeah. You want to spot? You thank any of your sponsors? Yeah, I want to thank uh, Olympic Sport Nutrition and Trifecta Nutrition for taking care of me and uh, allowing to have the best preps uh, in my competitive career so far. So it make, uh, Trifecta Nutrition is really making it really easy for me to have my food, you know, delivered every week, organic cool. food. Um, and, you know how much food is important for us. So. Having this ready uh, on a daily basis and don't have to worry about it, and it's it's a huge plus. And Olive Sport Nutrition just just makes everything else easier. Um, and of course, I want to you know thank my coaches, uh, Chris Acido, always the the best uh, trainer coach out there. And uh, I've never never doubted him for anything. Everything everything yeah. he says just works. And um, Mendes Buckle, since I've been here in uh, Chicago, is taking care of me here. Uh, we got. I think we lost. And we're working hard on my posing, so I think that's going to also be a big part of my overall presentation on stage, being able to shake everything the best. So thanks to all these people. Well, it sounds like you got all the boxes checked off there, Stan. Uh, best of luck. Uh, we'll keep us updated, and uh, I'll be rooting for you to hopefully uh, crack that top five over there in uh, the Cal Pro. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. All right. And now, guys, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo for Stanimal. We'll see you next time.